Hey, this is Nick with another video tutorial. Today we're going to be doing some portrait retouching. Um, I have this image here on my computer. Um, I took this at a recent runway show and we're going to edit it from start to finish. So let's take a look at it and let's go over to the computer here. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom as always and we have this portrait. Um, this this runway shoot was a Zodiac theme and this was this was Taurus, and you can see she's got she's got some horns and stuff. Uh, it was it was such a cool show to be a part of. So I think we are going to edit. Let's go with this one. So I'm starting off in Lightroom, and uh, the overall goal for this shoot for this image is I'm going to add some texture into the side once we get it retouched. But the first step is, let's check our white balance. Yeah, I suspected we were a bit too warm. Let's bring this down a bit. I want it to be nice and warm, but not quite that warm. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to go through and remove blemishes. So we're going to go to our spot removal brush. We're going to zoom in. And then we're just going to start getting rid of all the blemishes we see. When you're using the spot... Uh, spot healing brush um, it can sample from places that it shouldn't so you kind of have to correct it from time to time I'm just gonna go through here since this is kind of a uh, more fantasy type portrait I'm not I'm not really striving for realism here I'm I'm going to go to town with the editing probably if this was a client or for something else I, I wouldn't edit to the amount that I'm going to edit today so I'm going through and getting rid of every single little thing that kills the illusion of this being a supernatural person <laughs> so we're gonna try to make her skin like awesome perfect so getting there next thing I'm going to do that's probably all the blemishes I'm going to remove with the spot healing brush probably done with that next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the sharpness and decrease the clarity now anytime that you're going to decrease the clarity on skin you need to increase the sharpness a bit just to maintain the texture of the skin so that's what we're gonna do now I'm going to take my brush and just paint paint that over the top of especially her face. The sharpness will maintain the texture of the skin and removing the clarity will get rid of the blotchiness of the skin. And you take this fairly far. Um, the, the one thing you don't want to do, which a lot of people make the mistake of in the beginning, is just completely removing all the texture altogether and that's a an awful awful thing you don't want to ever do that also I don't know if it's just a spot on my monitor but yeah I see that we're going to fix that didn't notice that before okay I'm going to don't really have to worry about the sharpness on this one because this is going to be for her neck and chest which is already kind of out of focus so it's not as important to uh, to keep sharp okay now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of punch to the eyes mostly to the irises not to the you don't want to mess with the whites of people's eyes that's just creepy when you do that but I'm going to add some sharpness, a little bit of clarity. I'm going to boost the exposure just about that much. And I'm going to paint this over the irises. And you can see what that does. It just brings out all the texture and she's got pretty cool eyes actually. <laughs> I'm just noticing. So it's bringing out all the texture and stuff in her eyes. And I think this will this will go well with this uh kind of fantasy themed shoot. And then I'm going to take another brush, I'm going to add some sharpness, and I'm going to paint it over her eyelashes and over her eyes. 
Don't want to overdo it. You don't want her, the whites of her eyes to get too white. And I'll even paint this over her eyebrows. It just gives that sense of, sense of bam. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take another brush, add a little sharpness and a little saturation, maybe a little bit of clarity. I'm going to paint that over her hair just to kind of emphasize all the texture we have going on and, and uh, stuff. Looking good. Okay, um, I think we're ready to jump over to Photoshop. Um, yeah, ready to go over to Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit in Adobe Photoshop. That's the nice part about having Creative Cloud is Lightroom and Photoshop work so well together. Um, it's just nice to be able to bounce back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to do this where I have this layer and then I'm going to open up this other file that I have that has uh, this texture. It's my texture file. And I'm going to just highlight the whole thing, go over to this file, copy it. And now I'm going to go Control T for transform, and I'm going to make it big enough to cover my, my shot. And I'll hit enter. That tells it that I'm done resizing it. And now we're done. Isn't that great? <laughs> Almost. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to um, the blending mode, and I'm going to change it to overlay. And you can kind of see, actually, we're losing, losing the detail over in this. I'm kind of wondering if our background was a little too dark to make this work. Um, try overlay. Try, try soft light not working so well so I'm gonna have to do something real quick we will close this we will not save it we'll go back over to Lightroom and what we're gonna do is we're gonna brighten this background because this background is so dark that it's not taking on any of the texture of the other image so I'm just gonna take my black slider raise it up a bit and then we'll try that Then we'll just go edit in Adobe Photoshop it'll open eventually Nick will take a drink of his coffee this tutorial is brought to you by Folgers not really okay so I've already got it copied going to paste it onto here, going to resize it, like so, going to hit enter, going to change the blend mode to overlay, and it's working for the most part, yeah, okay, when I look at my monitor dead on, we're, it's working, maybe I'll go ahead and change that to soft light, that way we get a little bit more of the detail over on this left side. Okay, so obviously we need to mask out where it's overlaying onto her. because so we don't want that. So what we're going to do is over with this uh, concrete layer selected, we're going to create a new layer mask. So down here on this little icon right there, you click on that and it creates this layer mask. And now I'm going to take uh, just a regular old brush. I'm going to have black selected. And then I'm going to begin to just paint paint over where I don't want this concrete to be, which would be on her. Make sure that you're, you have the layer mask selected, not the layer, but the layer mask. And then just start painting. And as I paint on on this, it's going to essentially erase that layer from wherever I paint. So I'm going to just go like this, go like that. It's going to get a little bit tricky out into this stuff. But 
the way I would handle that is, well, let's make sure that I got the, the main meat of the photo masked out. It's easy to forget little bits. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my opacity to a nice low opacity and then just kind of paint over anywhere where it's obvious that the texture is on the top of of this stuff. Don't have to be super accurate. Just just enough accurate. Okay, and I think that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Control Shift E, which flattens the image. Then I'm going to go Control S, which will save the image. Once it's done saving, it's going to open back up into Lightroom, and voila, here we are. Um, I'll do just a couple of final, final. Uh, adjustments probably going to add a little bit of vibrance vibrance is good because it'll make our hair pop but it won't change the color of our skin I might go ahead and add some clarity to this texture over here Be careful not to get it too much on that uh, look a little funky maybe paint a little texture on the horns too why not and maybe I'll just add a tiny bit of vignette to bring it all together. And that's our final image. So hopefully this has been useful for you. Layer masks in Photoshop is so much fun. It's so useful. Um, I love adding these uh, textured backgrounds to shots where I shot it on a background. And it doesn't hurt when you have hair stylists and makeup stylists and stuff, you can end up with some really cool photos. So hopefully this has been useful for you. Go over to nickpagephotography.com, check out more of my work, more of my tutorials, sign up for a workshop, whatever you want to do. Subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time. Awesome. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.